What's up, boys and girls? This is Lance Hoyt, a.k.a. Lance Archer, the American psycho of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and you are listening to WNS Podcast. You are listening to the official Wrestling News Horse Podcast. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsHorse.com or check us out on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsHorse.com or WNS Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube, Twitter, Stitcher, and iTunes by searching Wrestling News Horse Podcast or WNS Podcast. Now being broadcast in over 45 different countries. Here are your hosts, Daniel Heron, Tyler A. Bear, and Doug. That's right. What's up, everyone? I am Daniel Heron. I'm Tyler A. Bear. I'm Doug. And we welcome you to episode 234 of the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, WNS Podcast, on YouTube, WNS Video, and on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. We're on Stitcher, Beyond Pod, and Player.fm. Just search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Uh, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at WNS Podcast. Daniel's at WNS underscore Daniel. Divine Star Tyler Aber is that Tyler under for Aber? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. So All right. welcome to the show. Welcome back, Doug. Yay! Glad hey. to have you back here. Hey, I'm back. Yeah, good stuff. So, uh, so like I said, we got lots to talk about this week. We're gonna dive into some feedback. We're gonna talk about Battleground. We're gonna talk about Raw. We're gonna talk about. Some uh, some lucha underground as well. So uh, before we get into all of that, Tyler, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah, hanging in there. Mm-hmm. I'm hanging. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, the beard's starting to grow. Uh, not too many people like it, but yeah, I do what I want. You're sticking with it. Yes. Oh, through thick and thin. <laughs> through thick and thin. Yes. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Just what's the overall plan for it how how much are we expecting for this how where's it going like uh, is it gonna go like are you how, what if it goes like to my chest or something like that I mean, if, my... if you can grow it i mean if that's what you want to do i'll try you shave in between like this and this the... yeah i do this right here okay, okay there. so your upper cheek and yeah because it's, it's doesn't connect it's random spots yeah Cause I've had like one like right here, mm-hmm. like it's just by itself. Oh, okay, but you do shave like in there. Yeah. Okay. So there is some yeah. grooming going on. Yeah. It's just not all over. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool stuff. So Doug, how you doing? I'm I hanging in there. Yeah, sure. You're on the recovery process. Yeah, sure. Okay. I pulled that tooth out. Oh. I pulled that bitch out. He he pulled your tooth out. Why is Tyler being so weird? I don't, I don't understand. With pliers. With pliers, apparently, he pulled your I tooth out. I didn't have a, a tooth pulled. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. <laughs> so, so welcome to the show. We got lots of feedback this week, which is always nice to see. Uh, we certainly appreciate everyone who's checked out the show and left a little bit of feedback for us. The first bit of feedback we have is from Stitcher, from Walter, who simply said, Fantastic. So, Thank you, Walter. Yeah, so thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, thanks for contributing to the feedback. Uh, I don't always Walter check. Walter White, am I right? I don't know. <laughs> High five. I don't know. Tyler's rubbing off on me. I don't know. Damn right. No, I don't know either. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you know, we don't always check Stitcher. So, uh, but I happened to catch it this week. So thank you very much, Walter. We certainly appreciate it. We, um, we never check Stitcher, so it's basically a miracle we didn't even do these. <laughs> So we have to catch it. That shouldn't stop anybody. No, don't don't let that stop you. So uh, next bit of feedback we have is from Subs. What's Subs? Saying I never thought the day would come where the Diva storyline is better than the IC storyline. <clears throat> well, it's here. Um, is it though? Yeah. 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 What's What's more relevant right now? The no, no, no. He didn't say is the IC title or the Divas title more relevant. He said the storyline. The Divas storyline is more important than the Intercontinental storyline. Or is better. I'm sorry. Better. Not more important. I don't know if I agree with that. No? Divas Revolution? As opposed to the... There's triple, not too much triple threat the between. They're just bringing them up and see what's going to happen. But I'm I don't more... know. I still prefer that over yeah. the whole uh, Big Show, Miz, and Ryback situation. I'll agree with that. It's got my, my attention more. So... All right, but thanks, uh, thanks, Subs. We appreciate it. Uh, next bit of feedback we have is from Jake saying, "You're right. It was supposed to be Mark Jindrak at first in Evolution. So thank you very much for the clarification. We appreciate it." Uh, next bit of feedback is from Benjamin saying, "Love the show, guys. And the Facebook thing is idiotic. Last post of you of yours that I saw was like four weeks ago. 
I just thought you guys were off Facebook for a while, but once again, great show, guys. Keep up the good work. So thank, uh, you. thank you for thank you for contributing about that, thank Benjamin. You. We certainly appreciate it. I know we touched we touched up on this last week. But we'll touch up on it again. If you're not seeing us on your Facebook, it's because Facebook has implemented new policies to where they want us to basically pay for advertisement. They want us to pay to reach the people who have liked our page. So. And it's not uh, like we don't want to, it's not like we think we're above like getting something for nothing. It's just that we don't charge for this show. Yeah. It's a free show. We don't make any money. So we're not mm -hmm. really looking to spend any money either. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> or, it's, I mean, we, we actually, we do end up having to spend money, but we're not looking to spend any more than we have to. Yeah. Right. So, you know, uh, if, if you are, uh, a person who likes our Facebook page, make sure you go visit our Facebook page, WNS podcast and, on the uh, right hand side where the little drop bar is for liked there will be a see it first option and if you click on that then anytime we post something it will appear right at the top of your news feed and i you know i do we're apologize not, we're not going to we're not going to like spam you all week either yeah the only time that we really go any kind of overboard with it is during raw because we're doing like sort of live commentary while it's going on raw Other, and probably pay-per-views yeah raw pay-per-views maybe and then once the show is posted. So, you know, like I said, if if you're like Benjamin here who has not seen a post of ours in four weeks, we are making posts. We are we are out there. It's just that Facebook is limited severely as to how many people are seeing our posts. I mean, we have 17,000 plus likes on our Facebook page and we're only being seen by 130 of them at any given point. Um, another reason you may not be seeing our posts on Facebook is because you don't like our page, which you should rectify immediately. Absolutely. Good plug. Good job. Uh, so, yeah. So, make sure to give us a like and uh, give us a follow on Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, and we would certainly most appreciate it. Uh, next bit of feedback we have is from Christine saying, please bring back the curb stomp ASAP. Seth Rollins is just not the same without it. That pedigree is not working for, for you at all. So uh, they actually clarified as to why they have banned the uh, the curb stomp. They don't want children uh, attempting that move. Uh, it has nothing to do with uh, injuring workers or anything like that. Seth Rollins clarified that he had never hurt anyone, um, you know, from doing the curb stomp. They just they would much rather it not be done by kids, but. You know, is that any different from doing the pedigree where you're jumping in the air and slamming someone's head on the ground? So, I don't know. I sure fucking love all those kids running around RKO and the fuck out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, yeah uh, they fucking embrace. Yeah, they don't, they don't have an issue with that. <laughs> um, but, I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe it's just the name, the curb stomp. They don't want to be, I don't know. It's WWE. They're fickle. We don't know. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, Sorry about that, Christine. Lord. Nothing that we can do. But uh, next what next bit of feedback, and it's quite a bit from Parker saying, "Well, you wanted stuff to talk about, so I got it." Uh, I know by the time this is read, Battleground will be over. First, about the NXT women, I love watching the NXT women wrestle because they are booked as people who want to win and just not catty chicks. Uh, it's sad to see how the women of Raw have transformed in, uh, from women wrestlers to eye candy that are supposed to be complaining every week. That's why I hope the NXT women don't go to Raw because I think that if they do, the sad reality is that their careers will be ruined. Second, what if Lesnar wins? Oh, dear Lord, don't make that happen. I can't stand the authority, but I'll take a Seth Rollins who shows up rather than a Brock Lesnar who won't come back until WrestleMania. Now, I like Lesnar, but I can't stand the fact that he never shows up. Now, think for a second. Raw has been an inconsistent and pretty bad with some ex uh, exceptions in the past few years. And I think the period from Night of Champions to Royal Rumble was the worst garbage I've ever seen. And it was when Lesnar was champion. I honestly couldn't take any more of Lesnar uh, if Lesnar wins, but never shows up. I think pay-per-views are, su are supposed to be big events of, of the year, but have transformed into pit stops. So long story made longer, if Lesnar wins, Raw will become a chore, and I might have to reconsider watching it. No matter how hideous Raw becomes, I always know that I have NXT, uh, Ring of Honor, TNA, and Lucha Underground. I hope this gets read, and thanks for reading. Uh, as far as the Lesnar stuff goes, I agree. I disagree completely. I think he should have won the title. Um, I think they should have capitalized off of the way they booked him since he's been back and they didn't do that. And I think that's a big mistake. Mm -hmm. And I think even with him not being there, first of all, you can't get mad at the guy 
for uh, negotiating a really great contract. If I only had to go to work like six days a year, but I got paid <laughs> anyway, I would fucking do it in a heartbeat and do mm-hmm. it too. Um, so you can't hold it against him personally. Um, I mean, that may, you can hold it against the office. That's fine. But um, uh, I think he should have beat Rollins. I think that was the way it should have went down. I think they should have made a guy off of beating Lesnar for the title. Mm-hmm. Um I'm sure we'll go into that even further detail later, but um, I disagree. I think uh, I think Rollins as champ has been pretty fucking boring, pretty fucking monotonous. I don't think it has anything to do with Rollins specifically or his ability. Um, I think it's how he's been booked, and yeah. he's on Raw every week with a title, and I think it's just as bad, if not worse, than the time frame that you singled out. Mm-hmm. Um, if anything, I got to see the stupid shit like uh, – top of the show in the middle of the show and the end of the show every week at least i mean lesnar is awesome when he's there yeah um and you get and Heyman tagging along with him so yeah and it's like Heyman said on the uh, on the podcast with uh stone cold where he's like lesnar coming is like christmas you don't want to have christmas 365 days a year otherwise it loses its special meaning so to have brock lesnar show up once or twice a month you know something like that it makes it more special you want to tune in you want to see what he's doing so. Plus, I think they've successfully elevated, uh, despite of shitty booking, they have successfully elevated the United States title to where it means a lot more than it did mm-hmm. just a short time period ago. So I disagree. As far as the NXT women coming up to the main roster, I guess uh, I wasn't here last week, so I guess I didn't really get my uh, ideas out there. I guess this sort of goes along with what Subs was uh, talking about, too. Um, I don't think it's a great angle at all. Um I think it's just that people are excited that those women are on the main roster, and I think that's cool. I think you should be excited. I'm glad people are excited, but I don't think that makes it inherently a great angle. Mm-hmm. You're just happy that those people are on TV instead of NXT or whatever, and that's fine. You should be. That doesn't make it a great angle. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Stephanie coming out and saying, "Hey, we're going to start a revolution." I think that sort of takes away from some of these girls' characters for her talking for them yeah. and her bringing them in as if it was her idea, uh, especially a, a strong character like Sasha Banks, where she's like this boss chick. Like to me, the boss chick doesn't get brought in by someone else. Boss yeah. chick decides she's coming in and you got to yeah. fucking deal with it. So I think it hurts some of these girls characters. Um, I understand the the viewpoint that Stephanie, that they've taken the, this division and treated these women like such a joke for so long that maybe it's a good idea to sort of have a figurehead of the company come out and almost formally say, hey, we're going to take this serious now, guys. I, get, I can see where people are coming from. And I think that, like, um, from a, hey, people start paying a real attention to this now sort of a, a viewpoint, maybe it is a good idea that they did it that way, but I don't think it helped. It worked as an angle because basically what she just did is said, hey, you girls, you're on that team. You're on that team. That's mm-hmm. not a strong angle to me. And I think it sacrificed some of the character along the way. So that's to jump back to subs a little bit. I don't know that it's any stronger of an angle than the IC title angle. I think it's uh, just your excitement of seeing these women on the show, and that's not yeah. the same thing. That's it's decidedly not the same thing. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I don't know. Um. As far as this whole like women's row, I don't know. Are we? I think it, it remains to be seen, and time will tell if this is revolution or evolution. Because evolution is just they brought these chicks up, and they're gonna sort of mix them in with the chicks they already have. That's going to be mm-hmm. evolution. But our revolution is they're going to tear this fucker down and, like, show everybody what's up. And I think it remains to be seen if that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, like the new <laughs> the NXT divas are going to drive out the the Raw divas or the WWE divas and say, this is our place now. We're taking over. And look, I don't... Th- I'm don't, get, don't take this the wrong way. I don't want people to say that you need to feel sorry for the existing divas or the pre-existing divas... But I do think you should realize that when people like the Bellas, when people like Alicia Fox, when people like that were brought brought in previously, the emphasis was not on ring talent. And it's not their fault that that wasn't the emphasis when they were brought in. Mm-hmm. It's not their fault that they they changed. I mean, like, if they bring, if I go into work and they hire me under one set of rules and now they say, hey, uh, Sorry, Doug. Now your job requires you to be able to like 
you know, run a four minute mile and jump like 50 feet high. Like, oh shit. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> Is it my fault that I got hired? Well, you better with, start learning. <laughs> yeah. It was my fault. Now I'm not saying you need to feel sorry for these girls. Just like you shouldn't feel sorry for me. It's just the job. It's how the world works. They're right. going to have to adapt or when they overcome. were originally brought in, they were still doing like the, uh, the playboy yeah, uh, I mean, but stuff. like who's going to be on the next cover of Playboy? It's, it's not necessarily their faults either. And I yeah. know people love to hate those women, but I mean, lighten up a little bit. It's not not really their fault. Yeah. And at least Nikki has improved significantly in the ring. So she's you can tell that she's making an effort. And there are, <laughs> there are divas on the roster that are trying to make the effort. They're sure. Just, they're just not being booked well. They're given three minute matches on Raw with a commercial break in between. Or well, they're they're really yeah. not super talented, but I mean, yeah. I mean, some are trying. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard for me to feel. I don't want. I'm not saying feel sorry for them. I'm just I'm just saying be aware that it's not necessarily you know all of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, but thanks, Parker. We certainly appreciate it. Next bit of feedback we have also uh, quite a bit is from our buddy Victor. Victor. So uh, thanks for the feedback saying, uh, another great show, guys. Sorry about the root canal, Doug. Been there, done that. Hope you get better. Um, about the listeners not speaking up as much as we used to, I think it's due to a combination of things. Us running out of questions and the ups and downs of wrestling. We don't want to make you answer the same questions over and over again, so it'll take a while to get some good ones. And personally, aside from NXT, I've been kind of burnt out on WWE, so I haven't been as active, but I'm always listening. Hopefully, we can keep communicating with you guys, even when some of us aren't into the product. Thanks again for everything. Gotta say, I like how the Divas are split up into a bunch of different alliances. Really gives me a much clearer idea of which field the ladies stand on. Hashtag Divas Revolution. Oh, I don't like that, Victor. I don't like how they were just sort of slotted into themes. I don't know how yeah. I feel about that. It's a turf war now. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like that. I don't know I don't know what a better way to have done it would have been, but I don't like it. Yeah. Um I think they sort of sacrificed some of what makes them them to do this. Yeah. Um but thanks thanks uh for the, the love on the yeah. root canal, Victor, you fucking sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and uh going back to the communicating with us, even if you're not watching the products, that's that's where uh a great place where, where Twitter will come into play. So if you're ever, you know, wanting to send us a tweet or something even if it's just hey did you happen to catch this show or what are your what are your thoughts on the upcoming season of insert tv show you know hey man like that i'm not look it's not your job to ask these questions it's just yeah. not anybody's yeah, and um not. if you don't have one you don't have one i don't it, it, half the time we end up copying out of these questions anyway to be honest <laughs> with you so don't worry about it dude it's like book not. your favorite pay-per-view go <laughs> stuff like that but yeah, if you have a question for us, it's not even it doesn't even have yeah. to be wrestling related. You can ask us or, you know, if you want to just reach out to us during the day. Uh check us out. Twitter. Check me out. Yeah. Tyler underscore A Bear. Check out his vines. You're up to like what, two now? I got two vines. Two vines. You got two well, in the got you got three. two coming up? You got two additional coming up? No, I'm I'm trying to work on some more and I'm trying to get equipment and figure out I'm trying to get apps to edit certain mm. things i'm not finding good apps to edit stuff so yeah and in time you'll be there i'm searching yeah well good luck on that so next bit of feedback we have is from chris saying just thought i'd give you some feedback i listen every week and the show is great keep up the good work guys Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thank you very much for listening. And final bit of feedback we have from Brian saying good pa uh, good podcast as usual. I always look forward to them. Thanks, dude. Thank so, you, man. Yeah, thank you very much. We certainly appreciate it. Um, so with that said, it's time to go into Battleground. Yeah, so you weren't here for uh, for our Battleground uh, predictions. Sure weren't. I know. Sure uh, wasn't. I, I was wrong on just about every single match. Um, I don't remember what Tyler's predictions were, but... I know we were in unison for quite a number of them. them. Yeah, no, if no, not no. All. there was one that we were opposite. I think. Uh, I think. Yeah, and uh, I don't think that's ever happened to me before. Where I got that many incorrect. So uh, shows what I know, right? But let's talk about Battleground. Happened this past Sunday on the WWE Network. The first matchup, uh, I did not get to check out the kickoff matchup between uh, Wade Barrett and R Truth, but uh, they let Barrett win, um, which is. Strange. I mean, I guess so. I mean, I, I really don't know. But if you're going to continue this, didn't it seem like they they kept on doing it, stopped it for a while, mm -hmm. and then brought it back? Yeah. 
Um, I know they don't have nothing to do f- do uh, for them, but like um, I expected our truth to win and like mm-hmm. continue the feud. And yeah, I guess so. Barrett has lost his crown. What are they? What because what is he I thought they do? did another. And, they had another point where Barrett did beat our truth like multiple times. It's like, hey, that's right. just we're done. Right, we are done. But, it should have been over two or three weeks ago, but they continued it. Had a battle for the crown, and Barrett wins again. And yeah, you know, I, I we didn't see it, so we can't judge the match. But it's yeah. still it's still weird to me. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm over it. Hopefully, this will be the end of it. Perhaps I don't know, Doug. What are your thoughts on this Barrett R Truth feud and with Barrett getting the win on, at Battleground? Uh, well, I didn't see it because yeah. I was in um, transit to mm-hmm. your house to watch the event. So right. But, I mean, what are your thoughts about instead of having Truth get the win, they they had Barrett pick up another victory over over Truth. Do you think this will be the end of the feud? Do you want it to be the end of the feud? Uh, well, I don't care. I mean, honestly, yeah. I don't care. I don't think they, they care, which is ultimately more important. Yeah. Like, we could never care if they don't care. <laughs> and, well, I mean, I mean, honestly, if we can't care if they don't care with what they're doing. And mm-hmm. they don't seem to sure those guys much care so yeah i don't know so uh but yeah so wade barrett ends up getting the victory which takes us into the uh the first matchup that being randy orton versus sheamus and uh it, we were definitely in randy orton's hometown getting a very large re- reaction yeah. from the well, crowd we didn't we weren't for sure where they were at until doug was like uh this is weird where are they at yeah had to had to check up on where the location was and sur- sure enough it was st louis so uh randy orton's hometown so, well, is it, have you heard in, in a different place uh, that many cheers for Randy Orton? Not really. I mean, there are there are a few places here and there where he gets he gets a good pop, but this one was very noticeable. So, Orton versus Sheamus. What y'all What y'all think about the matchup? I thought it was <clears throat> perfectly acceptable match from these guys. Um, pretty solid stuff. Um, it's, it's really hard, even when. Even on a night where Orton looked like um, like invested and in sort of into what he was doing because he was uh, in front of his hometown crowd, it's it's hard to invest in Randy Orton emotionally, or it's hard to even when Orton's having a good match, it's hard to um, you know care because he's been the same guy for so long mm-hmm. with uh, little to no. A change in his offense, his character, his presentation. He's so the same. He's so, he's been such the same guy for so long that it's hard to you know care about anything he does, even when he's having like a, a perfectly decent match for the for the show. Yeah, uh, I did think it was good. I mean, this is you know this is like I guess it's fine for an opener, but this is sort of like a SmackDown main event type match. This is like what you would get out of a SmackDown main event, which is fine. I watched SmackDown. And it's it's fine, but uh, I don't know. I, I do think the wrong guy won. Like here, I understand the uh, the concept of putting putting over the hometown guy in his hometown. However, that's not their mo. Usually, they usually mm-hmm. like to bury the guy in his hometown. If yeah. not, job him out in his hometown. So, but uh, but what they but what they also like to do is they also like to job out the the briefcase holder. Yeah, and so it's 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 weird that. It's weird to see their two ideologies crash <laughs> against each other and see which wins out. Like mm-hmm. we like to job the briefcase guy, we also like to job the guy in some town. Uh, for, I guess I, I can only assume that they think that gives him sympathy uh, to job a guy in some town. So uh, it's it's weird to see their two like ideologies crash against each other and see which one won out. And apparently, <laughs> hometown uh, boy, hometown boy wins out over briefcase holder. And what's really interesting is that Tyler and I even discussed like. What does Randy Orton have to gain from a victory? Whereas Sheamus, that you would want to build him and establish him as a viable champion for the future. I mean, their idea that um, jobbing out the guy with the briefcase often, their idea that doing that creates like a level of surprise uh, whenever he does cash in just does not mesh with me. I, I just don't believe it's true. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I I don't think I've ever been um, surprised that a guy cashed in and won just because he's lost so many times. Yeah. If anything, I think you're you sacrifice all his credibility just to 
to fail at an attempt of a surprise, which I I just don't think it works either way. So mm-hmm. I don't know why you wouldn't just at least maintain his credibility in the meantime. At least, you know, establish him as a dominant force. And, you know, you could have the commentators play it up. Like, he's been so dominant, he could cash in at any time, uh, even when the champ is fresh, and I think that he would still pull it off. Well, The, the only time I think it's actually surprising is, like, when – they allow you to forget about it. Like when they mm-hmm. sort of put it on the back burner where it's not, you know, when a guy initially wins it, they like to do a couple of like fake outs, like really soon after he wins, like the first couple of weeks they do like, mm-hmm. you know, a fake out, like practically every show. Yeah. And so, but then if they like pump the brakes, like I think you can, you know, make it surprising if you just, you know, allow it to just be a guy's holding the briefcase without like punching it down people's throats that mm-hmm. he could cash in any. Yeah. Just sort of allow it to be a surprise. But. And the way that they did it with Rollins cashing in at, at Mania, I know a lot of people were expecting him to to cash in after the match, and but the way right. that they did it just it worked so well yeah, because good. people weren't expecting it, and that's one of the few times where the fans were generally caught off guard. Um, you know, there there are times where the fans call for it, but like, oh, this would be a perfect opportunity, and they, you know, refuse to pull the trigger on it. Yeah, well, um, this is like the first year they, or this is the first time they've established that you can add yourself to a match, though. So that's mm-hmm. why, you know, that could be like so surprising, I guess. Yeah, it was really good. Um, but yeah, Randy Orton ends up getting the victory. Really good stuff. Uh, the The whole card, I feel, was there were there were good matches. It was just an, I guess, the outcome wasn't as predictable. I mean, they went a completely different direction of what a lot of people were thinking. Uh, they were going to do. So, I don't know. But the uh, the next matchup we got to see was for the Tag Team Championships. Primetime players going up against the New Day. And uh, Xavier Woods was on the outside barking uh, barking at Michael Cole and JBL and Jerry Lawler. And uh, I enjoyed this matchup. They uh, they managed to keep Xavier Woods out of the, uh, out of the equation. And... Uh, allowed primetime players to pick up the victory, but what do y'all, y'all think of the matchup? I thought it was super fun and uh, really solid. I like both these teams a lot. Um, Kofi's really turned myself, um, turned me around. I still don't think Kofi's really? a great worker. I don't, I don't think... <laughs> uh, let me clarify. Like, I, I don't think Kofi's a great worker, but I think he works better as a heel. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think just um, the way he's freshened himself up, he's a lot more tolerable to me. The first time he's a heel. Yeah, I mean... I think Big E's got a lot of potential. I think Big E's really good. I think he could be something. I think primetime players are a really good tag team. Yeah. Uh, Kofi has, you know, made himself tolerable to me. And uh, <laughs> I think Xavier is really good as he's he's a wrestler, mouthpiece. but he's 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 pretty much their manager, mm-hmm. like more or less. I mean, he's sometimes sometimes he does work, but I mean, he's basically their manager, and he's really good at that. I mean, the way he adds to the match just from you can hear him. Like, uh, you know, throughout the match, just because yeah. he, he yells it so loud. and he's That's got, that old Jimmy Hart days. Yeah, he's... Ba- he Come ba- on, man, you can do that. You got to stay on him. He's basically Jimmy Hart, except he didn't need the mi- he didn't need the <laughs> megaphone because he could just... Yeah, he just yelled it out loud mm-hmm. enough, you know? But uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. I think these dudes uh, work really well together, and, I, you know, I'm fine with them to continue to feed for a few more... At least another month or two, I could, yeah. I could watch these guys wrestle each other. And it certainly looks like that's going to be the case. They're, they're going to be continuing this feud. Uh, you know, I do want to touch up a little bit how much that I'm enjoying Titus O'Neil work. I think he's doing a really solid job. He is, you know, we, we've said it time and time again how well he's been performing yeah. um, over he's the past few months. He's gotten a lot better since the NXT. Yeah, day. since his NXT days. The uh, NXT. His offense, you believe it. With the with the shoulder blocks and you know whenever he catches Kofi and just flings him around the ring, it's just, I like that move. It's just impressive to see. I I really like it. He, it's really good stuff. He, I I really enjoyed the match. I'm, I agree with Doug and all that. Um, I think it'd be good to kind of like continue the feud, but mm-hmm. like what if like okay, so they lost the next match, they won the titles back. And that still continues. Yeah. It. And then maybe they'll lose again maybe like two or three months later. Yeah. Because I would like to kind of see it go back and forth. Not like mm-hmm. super fast, but. Not, oh, we had our rematch on I Raw the next like, night. Yeah, because and... I feel like New Day had it for a short period of time. Yeah. And, you know, if if things go the way that they, they might, uh, then we'll probably see this rematch at SummerSlam, which I believe is, you know, five or six weeks away. 
So plenty of time to at least reestablish the feud, continue the feud, build up from there. Next matchup we're going to talk about Bray Wyatt going up against Roman Reigns. Now for weeks Bray Wyatt has been getting inside the head of Roman Reigns saying anyone else but you, anyone else but you, anyone else but you. And I don't even know what that means, but apparently there is anyone else but Roman Reigns. Any ideas on what that meant? Maybe it's a song. Uh, yeah, I think it's sort of playing off the fact that He's got the a lot of the fans hand. knew that he was sort of the anointed like uh, guy to sort of rise up, mm. become the man. And uh, I think that's what he's referencing is mm. that, uh, um, I guess, in a sense, like a sort of like professional jealousy in a, or, you know, he's basically saying, you know, anybody would be more worthy than you. So mm. I think that's what they're getting at. Deep. Really good it stuff. It didn't go the way I, I thought it would, like, because I really thought that uh, Roman would win. Mm -hmm. uh, Bray always loses. <laughs> yeah, well, not Bray always. Does have a not to always. Lose. But um, I thought this match was, was fine. I enjoyed the work that both of these guys had. I know uh, throughout the night, we were keeping a tally of how many times they used a bump on the apron. And uh, this one, I believe, had one as well. But we well, had that dope spot where. <laughs> Reigns goes for the drop kick on the apron, yeah, and, but Bray them. cut him off with a lariat through the ropes. That was really nice. Which was pretty sick. Yeah. That was, yeah. Uh, you know, I enjoyed their work. How about you, Doug? I thought it was a good match. Yeah. Um, it's sort of hard to be mad about, like, two dudes who are willing to just slug it out, smack each other really hard, and uh, that's sort of what they did, and I'm sort mm -hmm. of into that type of wrestling. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was good. As far as the... Uh, you talking about the apron bumps thing. Supposedly that's like an actual directive from like management that they asked them to do. Like they're <laughs> like WWE is gearing up to go to go to war with Ring of Honor apparently. And like one of the things they said was what? Hey guys, we want you guys to do more apron bumps. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's sort yeah, well, of because I know they what? That's I know ridiculous. That, I know they're bringing in Jushin Thunder Liger to their NXT takeover. And that was supposedly a shot at Ring of Honor. Well, so um, by the time you're hearing this, uh, Meltzer's like new report, which he's been teasing for a few days now, probably already drops. And uh, supposedly, you know, Ring of uh, WWE's basically declared all out war in Ring of Honor. They're trying to try to put him out of business. Good oh. lord. Uh, I mean, yeah. The the thing about the whole Liger thing is uh, a shot because they booked him out from New Japan, who's uh, the NXT show that that Brooklyn, the Takeover Brooklyn that he's on, is going on at the exact same time. The Ring of Honor has their Field of Honor show, which they also have booked um, Nakamura and um, Okada, other New Japan talents, on the same. So it's almost as if Liger was a response to uh, they're running the same talent at the same time. If they have New Japan talent, like they're going to put New Japan on New Japan talent on their card wow. uh, to sort of even the playing field, and. Uh, what it looks like is that um, what we know right now, and um, I saw Meltzer put it something to the effect of um, when he's talking about like what he's about to drop, like they're they're attacking like all the um, the buildings that Ring of Honor would run. Um, so Ring of Honor probably runs those like two thousand. the The thing is, is that since NXT. Since they decided to make NXT a touring brand, Ring of Honor is direct competition to NXT, and they're trying to. That's that's what they're worried about. If NXT, you know, if that's going to be a brand that's going to tour and draw, then they need to put like competition, which Ring of Honor would be direct competition for NXT out mm -hmm. of business. And they're looking to set up deals with the build the type of buildings that Ring of Honor would run, which is like your your like two thousand seat. seat. They're not going to run your your fifteen your. 15,000 seat arenas are going to run like your 2,000 seat arenas because yeah. that's about where they draw. And um, supposedly the thing is, is that they're looking to cut build, like cut deals with these buildings. Like, oh, do we want to run your building, whatever, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, yeah, but don't you guys sort of, you know, draw like a lot more than they're mm -hmm. like, no, yeah, we really like your building, though, whatever. <laughs> There's just this one thing like uh, we want to be exclusive wrestling product in your <laughs> in your building. If it, so we're we're willing to run your building. We're willing to you know pay you what you want, but uh, we want to be the only wrestling in your building. Wow! So if Ring of Honor can't run, Ring of Honor has to to sell 
NXT is not necessarily all about drawing because there's like that's not the business model for WWE. Mm-hmm. Their their business model is totally on like net um, network subscriptions and uh, royalties from like you know their shows and stuff. Yeah, but Ring of Honor has to to sell enough tickets to like make it worth them going to another city. And if they can't, if they don't have a building that could even hold as many people as they want. That's 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 a big problem for them. Hmm. And uh, basically. The, the buildings that would be allowed in are either too small or too big for them to be worth their while. So that's sort of... And then Meltzer, so by the time you're hearing this, he may have already dropped his uh, his report because he's, he's been working on it. So yeah. uh, but he says the next thing... He, he said that the next thing... That's like the current tactic, but the next thing down the line that's coming, they won't even see coming. So who knows what that even means. Wow. They're going to buy Sinclair Broadcasting. Well, there was all that talk about WWE Live, like yeah. them wanting to partner with WWE Live to sort of have these guys that blows from my the mind. bottom up through. You know what I mean? That's crazy. That blows my yeah. mind. So, I mean, it's it's not like... um. Why would you do that? I mean, Well, supposedly, they're not, they weren't happy about the cable deal, the Destination America deal. Mm-hmm. Suppose they're not happy about them sort of starting the trend of like all these places that run... Like uh, WrestleMania weekend, like uh, Ring of Honor yeah. was the first people to do that. They weren't happy about that. Um, you know, it's just a lot of stuff. You know, like basically what it comes down is to like if NXT is going to be a successful touring brand, they are a direct competition with Ring of Honor, mm-hmm. and that's what they're. Ring of Honor is not competition for the WWE, but it is competition right. for NXT. They're competing for the same fans. Like right. the people who would go to an NXT show are the people who would go to Ring of Honor show, and vice versa. Yeah. And that's where why they're going to war. Which is bringing the questions of, are we going to see Samoa Joe on the main roster? Are they going to keep him down in NXT? So on and so forth. You know. but, I mean, that's we've we've been saying that for months. Is like, well, some of these guys could be on the roster now. Why mm-hmm. are they? Well, if they're going to tour, they got to draw. Yeah. And those guys are going to draw. They want to try and outnumber. But is it weird that they, like, I know they, they're doing that stuff with, for Juice and Liger, but, like, isn't that weird for a WWE to bringing someone for a night who that large of a name from somewhere else it's not weird if they're looking to to put ring of honor out of business or severely damage their business i mean it's i don't understand why they would want to do that though yeah i mean that seems short-sighted to me and a lot of other people as well it's sort of like biting the hand that feeds you it's ring of honor yeah, sort of gotten wanna, a lot of talent from ring of honor yeah i mean it's it's an unofficial like feeder system for them, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, WWE. You can say the same thing for WWE and Live, which is your Evolve and your previous Dragon Gate USA's. They they kick as many guys as the Ring of Honor kicks to them. They're both sort of like your upper tier indies. So, do you think this is a way to, okay, like you were saying, drive down the numbers for <laughs> Ring of Honor, maybe have them lose their cable deal to where they have nowhere else to go, and WWE swoops in and says, "Well, we'll take it from you. We'll we'll." We'll take, you know, the business side off your hands. You uh, work for us now. Well, supposedly they were talks of them working together in a more official capacity before mm-hmm. the WWE and live stuff. So I don't know what caused them to not, or, or maybe it's out there and it's just something that I never read or, yeah. or something. Or like, but, um, as opposed to waiting for a certain wrestler's contract to expire and see if he wants to renew with Ring of Honor or try and come over to WWE, they just said, well, forget it. We'll just buy out. Uh, Ring of Honor at a low price, and that way we'll have all of that talent. Well, I think they're operating on like theoretics, and that that even though Sinclair does not pump millions into Ring of Honor, Sinclair is a billion dollar company that owns yeah. a, owns a competing wrestling company, and so should they ever choose to, despite how like small of a percentage of a chance that ever may be, because they're not pumping very much into them now, right? If they ever said just decide to pump a bunch of money into them, they're a direct competition because Sinclair is a billion dollar corporation yeah. and it owns a wrestling company. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I guess they're ba- I guess they're it'd be Ted Turner all over again. I mean, I don't know if it would be that because I don't know. I, I feel like if they had someone within their company that wanted to push wrestling that hard, they mm-hmm. would already have be giving Ring someone's trying to convince money. them, y'all, it's coming back. Wrestling's coming back in a big way. And- so I mean, I guess I guess it's a they're not happy with some of the practices that they currently have, and b they're scared of like competition in the cities and <laughs> see theoretically they could be real competition if Sinclair ever wanted, ever wanted to actually try to be competition. That's know. that's just crazy to me. <laughs> I don't understand, but I mean, hey, they can they're gonna do what they want. They've got the money, they've got the power, so not much uh, Ring of Honor can really do. 
Uh, so I'm just trying to keep moving on. But, uh, but yeah, talking about Bray Wyatt ended up getting the victory. Uh, I know there was a lot of rumor that Sting was actually going to be the, at the event, but we did not see him. Um, Bray Wyatt ended up getting the victory. We didn't get to see. Uh, but one of the cool things that we did get to see during this matchup was Luke Harper coming back, rejoining the Wyatt family, which I think was a very nice <laughs> Who's touch. Who's that guy under the hood? Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the guy with a giant beard wearing the same jeans that Harper wears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, delivering be, a kick similar to, to Harper. Oh, it must be Sandow. Yeah. So uh, so that was a nice touch. I'm, I know we've talked about it numerous times whenever they split up split up the Wyatt family that there was probably a poor decision they shouldn't have done it and it looks like they might be on the verge of reuniting I know uh, Eric Rowan is out currently on a on an injury so maybe whenever he heals up he can come back and rejoin the the family so uh, I'm I'm all for it I, I I don't think they should have broken them up to begin with and uh, we'll have to see where it goes from there so any other thoughts on uh, on that one no, I mean, Harper's awesome. I'm glad he's going to be... Um, although it sort of refreshed him up to be off of the A-shows, but he's yeah. he's been on main event having good matches and stuff, so it's not like he mm-hmm. hasn't been around. He's just probably not in the forefront. So, um, I, I'm sure, I'm glad to see him back on. Next matchup we're going to talk I'll about. It. Charlotte versus Sasha Banks versus Brie Bella. Well, earlier in the night, uh, what, uh, Stephanie Mann was talking to JoJo and said uh, <laughs> from... Uh, uh, representative from each team mm-hmm. is going to fight and we did not know who was going to fight yeah this was sort of uh improvised they did it to uh fill the time of the triple threat match that unfortunately did not happen thanks to ryback being out on injury so they devised a triple threat divas match between the newly formed teams and uh one thing that i found really funny is how short jojo really is <laughs> yeah. uh, i think she's five foot two something along those lines so how tall is stephanie uh well i'm guessing with those heels much taller so uh <laughs> i don't know for sure so uh it ended up being charlotte from the team of Paige, becky lynch and charlotte sasha banks from the team of naomi um tamina, tamina. And Sasha Banks, Team Bad, which they changed it. It's no longer best at dominating. It's beautiful and dangerous. Oh. Uh, which, uh. it works a little bit. I, I'm. It works a little bit better than best at dominating. Um, I like best at dominating better. Yeah? Okay. I think it fits. Yeah. So, beautiful and dangerous uh, is the new team. And then Brie Bella representing Team Bella. Um this this matchup it was a little shaky at the beginning. They had to, you know, obviously they find their footing and uh, get off those first time jitters on a on a pay per view for Sasha and and Charlotte. Uh, but once they found their footing, they were able. It to... It pretty much just seemed like there was a battle between um, Charlotte and Sasha, mm-hmm. and then uh, Bree just had some shots in there. Yeah. Uh, amazingly, the the one who's been in in the WWE main roster the longest, Brie Bella. I didn't like her work. I, I you know, I like Charlotte and Sasha Banks going at it um, more than I enjoyed Nikki's Bree's interaction. Better than Bree, right? Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. How about you, Doug? I thought that Charlotte looked pretty bad here. I would, I would, yeah. I would say Bree uh, outperformed her. That's not saying mm-hmm. much. Uh, uh, Bree is, you know, Bree. So I, I was about to say it's was... not a compliment, but I, I feel like. <laughs> Charlotte just, uh, I don't know, Charlotte messed up a lot. Charlotte, maybe she was a little nervous. I don't know. Mm, first um, time jitters. It was, or... Sa- Sasha was Sasha was awesome as always. Uh, I got no I got no complaints with Sasha. Stole the show. But, uh, you know, Bree's not going to light anyone's world on fire ever. And, you know, Char- Charlotte did not look very good here. I thought it was okay. Uh, they gave them time. They tried. Like Tyler said, is basically, they basically used Bree to sort of, uh, to link segments of Sasha and uh, Charlotte, Charlotte together and break apart their segments. She was mm-hmm. basically like a link between the two. But uh, yeah, it was okay. It was all right. One yeah. thing you said that you gl- you were glad that it wasn't the NXT girls pinning each other or one instead of yeah. The way they book, as evident by a lot of the outcomes on this pay per view, you always got to wonder about these people about how they're going to book and. You know, one of the NXT girls beating them in that match would would have been nonsense, and I'm glad they decided not decided. I'm sure they know it's nonsense, but they do a lot of things that feels like they should know is nonsense. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it was okay. I mean, uh, you know, 
again, Charlotte did not look very good, and uh, Brie was just Brie. Sasha, awesome as always. I don't know. Yeah. So, but Charlotte does end up getting the victory, submitting Brie Bella. Not too bad. But that takes us into the, uh, I want to call it the co-main event, because these guys have been putting on very good matches over the past couple of months. Um, that being John Cena going up against Kevin Owens for the United States title. And again, this was another matchup that I thought was going to go one way and ended up going the other with John Cena ended up getting the victory. Um, you know, these guys pulled out all the stops once again. It, it, it's sort of become a what can they really do to top the last matchup because they did a lot of similar spots, a lot of, you know, which isn't a bad thing because it was still an entertaining match. I think it was. I think it was. I think this match was way too similar, way too similar mm -hmm. to their previous matches. I think they didn't do enough. To differentiate, I think they, 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 the first two matches they've had have been like a lot of near falls matches, and uh, I don't know. I don't think I think they didn't need to do that a third time. I think they could have went a different route. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. This is probably their the least, probably for sure, like the worst match they've had together. Mm. Um, I think they could have done a lot more to differentiate, and I think the the finish was garbage. Like. Uh, yeah. I mean, Kevin Owens is effectively just another dude on the roster now. Yeah. He lost, He should have absolutely won that match. I know people... I myself have argued with people um, in the past about... It's not all about wins and losses. And it's not. Mm -hmm. But the time com when the time comes that it is about it, you have to you have to follow through on it. Um, so To become a star, you eventually got to beat a star. And, you know, to do that, you have to... There comes a point where you have to win the big match to propel the guy to that to that level. Um, we've seen it with Rusev. Look where Rusev is right now. We've seen it with Bray Wyatt. Look where Bray Wyatt is right now. Mm -hmm. Those guys were in big, high-profile feuds, uh, looking like guys they were going to make superstars, and now those two dudes are just another guy on the roster, just like Kevin Owens is just now just another guy on the roster. He's going to be... If you count NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, which is going to be happening in August... He's gonna lose that match to Baylor, Balor, yeah. excuse me. So look at him since they being on the roster. He's gonna be one in four in big matches on the roster. That's mm -hmm. just another guy. That's Dolph Ziggler. That's anybody else. That's Wade Barrett on the roster. Yep. He may have debuted with a lot of fire, and he may have had a lot of potential, and he still does. I'm not saying he's dead, but I'm saying they booked him to be just another guy on the mm -hmm. roster when he could have been so much more. Yeah, I mean, this was the <laughs> opportunity to establish Kevin Owens, have him beat John Cena for the second time. Who beats John Cena twice? And not only that, but he's taking the United States title away from him, giving sure. John Cena another reason to go after him. Continue the, the storyline. If if this is what they were going to do, he should have never dropped the NXT title to Balor. Mm -hmm. He should have kept it. He should still have the NXT title if this is what they're going to do to him. Yep. That's just garbage. It just it, doesn't make any sense to me on any level. It was disappointing, and that took me out of it. Yeah, even for last match. Yeah, it, that it, took me out. It left. I told Tyler this. It left a sour taste in my mouth because it was one. You made him submit. Two. It's not continuing the storyline. Three. Now we find come to find out they currently don't even have plans for Kevin Owens at SummerSlam, which this should have been the 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 rematch for the title between Cena and and Owens. They have a they have a real, real honest problem making stars. They have they're they're relying way too heavily on the past. They're relying way too heavily on Brock Lesnar. And they're relying way too heavily on John Cena. Yeah, they're relying way too heavily on guys like the Undertaker and The Rock to come mm -hmm. back when they need to pop a buy rate or pop a rating or scoop up some subscriptions. Yeah, they're, they're refusing not gonna... to make new stars yeah. because they say, "Well, we'll just bring someone back and that'll bring buy rates." Like I'm not the like I'm not as high on Wyatt as a lot of people were, but he could have been something of some substance, and he's absolutely not. Anymore. Yeah, they didn't pull the trigger at WrestleMania 30 when he faced John Cena. Same with Rusev at 31. I was high on Rusev. Some people weren't as high as on Rusev as I was. Maybe like the 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 flips of the Wyatt stuff, but mm -hmm. I, he could have been made a star regardless of what you think of him. You have to acknowledge that he was in a position to be made a star, right. and they decided to not make him a star. Yeah. They actively said, no, this guy's not going to be a star, because mm -hmm. all they had to do was say, yeah, we're interested in making this guy a star, and they could have made him a star. Yeah, <coughs> it's just garbage, man. It's it's ridiculous. I don't know where their thought one process is. One of the is, highest things for WWE for me was that mm -hmm. I mean, like that, that situation. Yeah, and then like this happened. I'm like, 
I don't. I mean, it's like this like was the reason people WWE, were tuning but, in. Yeah, but it's like, oh my gosh, this guy come in. He is. He has fire. Mm-hmm. He right. beat John Cena. Oh you my know, gosh! Who, how no one does that. Awesome is that. Not only was it the wrong finish, but they punked him out. Like he could have passed out. They could have either yeah. pinned him or let him pass out in the STF, but they made him tap. In. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I don't know why, what the point in was of that. And and where do they go from here? Because it looks like they might even do a, a Cena versus Rollins at SummerSlam, which I hope they don't go that route. <laughs> I, well, I'll tell you, I was really fearful they're going to do Kane Rollins, so I'm mm-hmm. at least thankful they're not <laughs> not doing Kane Rollins. Yeah, because it seems like they were playing the seeds for that. And I was uh-huh. like, and whenever, well, after, there's five weeks, so <laughs> yeah, and and so, oh god, if we get a triple threat, uh, man, I don't know about that. <laughs> but uh, you know, I was really just like dreading because because after coming out of this pay per view before before we saw Raw, I was like, okay, where does Cena go now? Where? Where does Owens go now, and where does Rollins go now? And we like, don't God. need a feud that's going to tie up in one thing, the the main title and the U.S. title. Yeah, we don't need like between two people. We don't need that. Yeah, tied up. the the U.S. Open Challenge has been the best consistent thing on Raw for the past few months, and so it it, it feels like that title means more than the World Heavyweight. Title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've successfully rehabilitated rehabilitated that title. Well, yeah. hopefully they can keep it going. It may just go down. Yeah, and I know some people are now starting to wonder: Is Cesaro going to be the guy who takes the title from from Cena? Like, is that the well? Re- Cesaro doesn't have. Now? See, to me, that's bad and lazy booking too, because Cena beat Cesaro twice clean. Yeah. To me, Cesaro, as much as I love the guy, as wonderful as a worker as he is, he doesn't have a storyline angle mm-hmm. in continuity claim to that title. He's yeah. been beat twice clean. So if you throw that on, that's as bad of booking as anything else. Right, and that's why I'm saying, you know, the 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 matches we got wrong in our predictions, but it's because they went in, in directions we can't comprehend at the moment. It's just... I don't agree with the decision that they made for this matchup. I, the match was awesome itself. I just, it left a sour taste in my mouth. I mean, I'm going to disagree on the awesomeness. I thought I was all right. I think they could have yeah. done a lot better. Well, the different. The match, I, the, I would say it was the match of the night. Uh, I don't know, man. I liked, uh, I liked Bray and um, Roman mm-hmm. a lot a lot mm-hmm. more than I thought I would, and I liked the tag match, the tag match quite a bit, too. Okay. I don't know. I don't well, know. With that being said, it's time to go into the uh, main event, Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. This matchup ended up in a no contest, and I know we, uh, on our Facebook page, uh, WNS Podcast, we um, we asked if there was going to be an over or under on 10.5 suplexes, and uh, most of the, uh, majority of the people said over, and sure enough, there were 13 suplexes in that match. Uh, Doug, what were your thoughts on this matchup? Um, it was fine. Um, I think they sort of overestimated the way people would feel about Lesnar killing Rollins the mm-hmm. way he killed Cena. Cause it's not the same thing. Like, like the catharsis of people of John Cena getting killed. People have so much feelings. Either neg- so much joy out of it. <laughs> people have so much feelings wrapped up in John Cena, whether it's positive or negative or a little bit of both. A lot of people have a lot to feel about John Cena. And mm-hmm. when a guy like Brock Lesnar comes in and decimates a guy like John Cena, it means a lot. Yeah, I think they overestimated what it would mean for people to watch Rollins get decimated like that. Was it, was it cool? Yeah, sure. Did it? You you don't get the feeling. It doesn't have the weight mm-hmm. that it happen that it does when it happens to John Cena. You know what I mean? But it was it was fine. But yeah. uh, I uh, like, finish was absolutely garbage again. Go yeah, <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, but I felt like Rollins got more shots in than like Cena maybe or whatever. Yeah, he was so. able to. You know, attack the leg that they had been working on over the past couple of weeks. So he got some offense in, but you know, it was not enough to take down the beast. Would you say that the ending that robbed the people of the ending for that match for uh, Lesnar versus Rollins? That whole Undertaker thing. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, it's clear. It's clear as day that they do not care one single bit about delivering finishes to these main events. What what Mm -hmm. have we seen that like? Six of the past like <laughs> special events have gone given us crap and non finishes to their main events. They don't care. They're not selling you. They're not. They're not asking you to pay forty dollars 
on a paper fifty dollars on a pay per view. So they don't care if you feel satisfied with your pay per view experience. Yeah. You paid ten dollars and you got the network. It's a continuation of the story. Yeah, they're so, selling you on the network and go but go back to Raw and see. So whatever. from what I understand with that match, Seth Rollins transformed into Undertaker. He did. That is exactly what happened. And then attacked him. Now, okay, if they were going to do something like this, don't have a pen. Don't have the ref get ready to go down and then have the lights go out. That still would have been three. That, yeah, that, that should have been a three count. What they should have done is have, uh, have Lesnar get him up on his shoulders, getting ready to deliver the F5, maybe even deliver the F5. As soon as he hits, lights go out, bells gong, Brock Lesnar's... You know, the uh, the, the referee gets there. distracted too much, okay? Yes, he does. Even the lights turn out and Undertaker appears. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. Yep. You guys you guys are being way too kind on this. Don't don't no, do it at all. Don't don't they shouldn't I'm, have done it at all. They shouldn't have done it at all. I'm just joking. No, I know, I know, but I'm just saying like they this is this is another example of garbage booking on this. Like yep. Brock Lesnar conquered the streak, ran through the roster, all the top guys. So who's going to benefit from that? What guy is going to benefit from the guy who conquered the Undertaker's undefeated streak? Oh, the Undertaker is going to benefit from the guy. <laughs> He's not giving somebody else on that roster a rub. Roman Reigns should be the guy to beat Brock Lesnar or Dean Ambrose or mm-hmm. or Kevin Owens. One of those dudes. So they should have made a guy by beating Brock Lesnar. This is ridiculous like parody like i gotta get my win back parody booking is garbage mm-hmm. like they should have used that to make a guy it benefits nobody it doesn't benefit the undertaker it doesn't benefit Brock lesnar and it sure as heck does not benefit any other guy they have on that roster which is what we just said they should do because they don't have any stars so what happens when the undertaker like can't go anymore and when john cena's new rom-com is so awesome he doesn't want to <laughs> wrestle anymore Supposed to be getting good ratings. He supposedly stole the show in that movie. <laughs> but uh, you know what happens when Brock says he's done? That's all very realistic things that could happen in a mm-hmm. very short time frame. Then who do they have to put this company on their back? Nobody. Kane. Big Show. Yeah, <laughs> Kane and Big Show. They're gonna carry the load. Also, uh, okay, Brock <laughs> is a hill. I mean, a face, right? He's he's supposed to have been, or yeah. he. That's how he's been presented. He's been presented. Then this and Undertaker, Undertaker did the in. low blow. Undertaker's a heel. Yep. So, I don't know. It's garbage. They should have made someone else off of that. Yeah. I don't know. I felt gypped. I wanted to see the ending, the, a true ending with Seth Rollins and Undertaker. I know there probably wouldn't be, to be mm-hmm. honest with you, but I still wanted to see it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the yeah, match ends saw, in a no we contest. We saw this match at WrestleMania. They didn't have a good match then. Why do, it, It's bad booking. It's short-sighted booking, and they are. There's no guarantee the match will even be good because we already saw them have a match and it was garbage. And why did he look so scared? Why was he afraid of the Undertaker? That's the old man you just beat half to death. Why are you afraid of that guy? Yeah, you just killed that guy. He should have just been like, oh, <laughs> smacked him around and then went about winning his title mm-hmm. so that someone could eventually beat him <laughs> for the title and mean something. Come here, old man. I'm gonna f five you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the match ends in a no contest, and that pretty much wraps it up. And now it's time to go into Raw, the first show post Battleground, and we only have about five weeks. Count me down, Tyler. Count me down. Count them down. <laughs> yeah, give them the numbers. That's right. So, uh, <laughs> already on the road to SummerSlam, and it looks like we're going to be getting some interesting matches. Maybe. Yes. Maybe Taker and Lesnar. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Almost certainty. I don't know. After a Raw, I think it better be more than a maybe. With the way that they brawl, there's no way that they're going to let these two guys clash in the ring. They almost tore the house down last time. So uh, we kick things off on Raw with Undertaker coming out, delivering a promo, saying, you know, how he's, you know, Lesnar continued to mock and mock and mock for so long, and now it's time to seek retribution, and he's going to... Well, he mocked, and then he stopped that, and then... Then they continue more doing of a it. good guy. Yeah. But Heyman brought it up a couple of times since since the turn. And Undertaker's the hill here, okay? Pretty much. But um I don't know. They they brought up the number of like for four hundred and sixty something days, you know, I've I've laid dormant and now you've unleashed a fire within me and like you've Did never he lay seen dormant in Houston? Maybe. Well, here's the thing. Um 
I'm glad that they at least tried to address why he waited so long mm-hmm. to um, to co- to come at Lesnar because in addition to what we're talking about in Battleground where I thought that this shouldn't have even happened that Lesnar should have just won the title and they should have used that to make someone else um, even discounting that if you look at it from the perspective of if this was such a big deal to him, then why was he able to have a match on the same card the following year with Lesnar? Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it didn't bother him there. I like that they at least to try to say, okay, streaks were made to be broken. I accept my loss, but you kept rubbing it in, and I've just had enough. At least that they tried to at least they, explain at least way. Yeah, they tried to make an effort, but it would have... It's They're reaching. It's weak, but yeah. they at least try. It Sometimes had, they don't even do that. It would have had much more meaning had Undertaker not been at WrestleMania this year. That would have been something to talk about. They'd be like, oh my gosh, how long has it been since we haven't had Undertaker face anyone at WrestleMania? This is this is unheard of. And then the gloating continues, you know, a, a year down the road. It's not like they needed him here there just to, to yeah. take even more momentum away from Wyatt anyway. Yeah. He's like in the negative when he comes to <laughs> So, you know, it would have had much more of an impact had the lights gone out, Undertaker's there, if he had not faced Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 31. so Yeah, I mean, you're asking a lot for people to believe that he was able to coexist on the same card with him and not care. Yeah. But just now, now. It's like, they, you know, it bugged me, but I put some focus on Bray Wyatt and figured that would go away, and no, he's still nagging. Gah, that angers me. Damn. I mean... The reality is they could not come up with a satisfying reason for this to happen. They just know that they wanted the match to main event, mm-hmm. SummerSlam. Um, at least they tried because sometimes they don't even put that much effort into explaining away something. You know? Yeah. Uh, I'm not happy with it. I don't think these guys are going to have a good match. They've already, We've already seen that these guys didn't have a good match uh, two Manias ago or the one before last Mania. The one we were at. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't have a good match then. I don't know that there's any reason to suggest that we would think they would have a good match this year. Um, I mean, I guess Taker looks up. Um, he doesn't look as frail, but he sort of looks like pudgy old man instead of like mm. frail old man. So it's just like a different version of like. <laughs> he looked better at Mania this year than he did. Uh, I thought he looked pretty frail at Mania. I thought he looked real frail. He looked then... real frail at 30. At 31, he looked pretty good. And now he's kind of. Yeah. Well, it's it's it seems like he tried to like bulk to like look big or something, but he's so old that it doesn't go to the right places. You yeah. know what I mean? That's tough. Yeah, I don't know, man. I got respect for the guy. It's just like this is just not what. And I, what is there to gain on either side? Well, here's the thing: is if Taker if Taker wins, it's stupid. If Taker loses, it's stupid. And like, I know there's so why just put, why do they bring him back to do this whole situation? There's a rumor going around that it's to set up for Taker versus Sting for for Mania. I mean, that's what people want. You didn't need to be. You don't have to beat Lesnar to get there, though. Yeah, and even with that, that's another match that is too late to happen. And you know, do you want do you want Taker to have his second loss at WrestleMania, or do you want Sting to go zero and two at WrestleMania? You know, it's yeah, a it's another. Point. It's another bit of garble that just doesn't make any sense. It's just going back to the battleground talk of like, hey, these dudes are not going to be around forever, especially not The Undertaker and Sting. Yeah. Uh, These dudes are not going to be around forever. Why don't you make a new fucking star so Mm -hmm. in five years you can have someone else to draw and when these fucking guys aren't there? No, no, we can't do that. That's crazy. Speaking of crazy, I I know we aren't watching Tough Enough. I actually sat down and I am, but I'm like a week behind because I watch it because we record on Tuesday night. So I, yeah, I I watched the one that replays after Raw, so I'm like a week behind. Or yeah, whatever. that's the one I watched. That show, honest opinion. What are your thoughts on Tough Enough? Um, I mean it's garbage. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you think so because I I think so as well. Mick Foley, uh, even before we started recording this show, he sent out a, a post. Because of the guy who got eliminated this week, he's basically Mick Foley is basically saying, "I'm done with the show. You, you've taken one of the best guys and cast him out, and 
I, I have no reason to even watch this show. Well, anymore. see, I, I don't even know where Foley's getting this. You taking one of the best guys thing because I watching the show, and again, I'm a week behind, but I can't imagine there's a whole world of a difference between this week and next week. Mm. That what have they done? They've truly given you some sort of opinion on what type of professional wrestler they would be. That they do like dumb little challenges, and they mm-hmm. do like, uh, you know, dumb. I mean, they don't even sh- mo- most of. It seems like in years past they showed a lot more time like in the facility showing them training, yeah, showing, showing them, them the drills. ropes, making yeah. them learn. This now they're like at like improv center and they've always done like little challenges, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But this time is like the time they're in the performance center is like at a minimum compared to where yeah. they've been in the past. Uh here's here's Mick Foley's post that it was posted not too long before we uh we started recording the show. Enough's enough with the elimination of Patrick two weeks after the dismissal of Daria. I am officially tapping out on Tough Enough. In order for a future season to seem relevant, WWE needed a guy who could step inside the role, into a role on the main roster within a year's time. Sure, there are some promising prospects left, but each one is a long-term project and a roll of the dice. Patrick was the real deal, and now he's gone along with this particular viewer. And then he asks, you know, what are your thoughts on Tough Enough? Yeah, I don't... Look. (laughs) I don't know what they've done to show Foley anything, to be honest with you. But that doesn't mean the show's any good. He's right. He, he's not wrong. The show's garbage, but I don't know how he saw anything in any of those people. Cause now, in my opinion, I don't think they've been given a platform to show anything that they would really have. That would mm-hmm. really mean something in the terms of like professional wrestling. Yeah. And what was it like last week, whenever they had to cut a promo, uh, whenever it came down to like the bottom three, and Paige got in Sarah Lee's face. Had she not done that, Sarah Lee would have would have bombed. Yeah. So why didn't Daniel Bryan get in the face of his bottom three? Why didn't Hogan get in the face of his bottom three? Right. So it's almost like they were trying to coax the audience a bit, saying, "Well, let's just let's see if we can bring this out of her." I'm sure. So I mean, that we can keep it on. And the thing that bothers me is that the only people who are voting are the people who are watching the show. So it's in the it's in the hands of the viewers, but only the people who are watching the show. Well, why? Who else would be suited to vote? If you didn't watch well, the show, then like you should have an opinion. You know? I mean, I get that, but shouldn't it be up to the judges more than any? Than oh well, they anything? have like a they they all have a save if someone's getting voted off that they think should still be there. They all have one save. They could save the person. Yeah, and so far no one has used it, which I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Like whatever. I mean, it's a work though. You know, they have their eye on who they want to win anyway. Yeah. Well, it's uh, easy to win. Probably. I don't know, man. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to think. And the, the track record of Tough Enough isn't exactly in great condition either. It's not the Tough Enough of old. Yeah. It's not. I don't, I don't like the presentation. I don't like the challenges that they've done. Well, it's, the winners have never done well for themselves. It's always yeah. been the other people. Yeah. So... I don't know, but we'll have to see. But we kick Raw off with uh, The Undertaker come out. Like I said, delivered his whole little spiel. Um, then we have the opening matchup. Charlotte going up against Brie Bella uh, in sort of a rematch from Battleground. No Sasha Banks this time around. Uh, they were on commentary. I, uh, I think they're focused. I know that they think that Charlotte's the easiest sell because she's a flair, and maybe mm-hmm. that's why. But Charlotte is significantly were the least talented of the three that they brought up. Hmm. And I don't, I guess they just got behind her because she's Flair's daughter and they yep. think that's an easy sell, but Jesus Christ, like the other two are like vastly <laughs> superior to her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Charlotte ends up getting the victory on Brie Bella, making her submit for the second time in 24 hours. Um, I don't know. I, I look forward to seeing Sasha shine and Be- Becky's really fucking good too, but yeah, Sasha's the complete package. She's got the character and mm. the fucking ring skills. They should have got behind Sasha. And she's so young, too. She's only going to get better. She's like 20 fucking 30, dude. She's going to be awesome. Yeah. If she's they, awesome now. If they put focus on her long enough, she'll be one of the top divas for many years to come. She, she mm. feels like an afterthought to, mm-hmm. to Charlotte. Yep. I don't know. Maybe that's what they want. And so it'll be like Sasha's, I don't know. If they were serious, then they would have like been like, okay, we're getting behind the most talented one, not the easiest to sell one or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, may- maybe that's the wrong idea. It's the still- tall, strong one with blonde hair who blah, blah, blah. I don't daughter know. Daughter of 
Hall of Famer. I mean, it's pro wrestling is a business, and businesses are to make money. So maybe they're right to get behind the person they think she's, should sell. But she's not the best. She's for sure the least talented of the three. Mm-hmm. So uh, with that being said, we go into the next matchup: Los Matadores going up against the Prime Time Players. And this match ended in typical WWE fashion, where the you know while it lasted though. Huh? It was fun while it lasted, though. Yeah, it was it was pretty fun, but the, it ended with uh, the typical music causes a distraction. You know, the, oh my god, though, I don't care. I give it a pass just because when Kofi Kingston does that little skip thing that he does, fucking drives me crazy. Where he's like, he does like the light things <laughs> while he's doing this. You know? like, I don't know. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So, I'm talking uh, about Kofi Kingston, mind you. I'm yeah. saying something about Kofi Kingston. Yeah, also. something in a positive manner for Kofi Kingston. I will, I'll allow that no I finish. I will take it. I just think to see Kofi do that little fucking thing. The power of positivity dance. is making you... Yeah. I think he's got the Good. clap. You got the clap. You got the clap, right? That's what it is. Kofi. Kingston. <laughs> I was going to say Kofi doesn't suck, but I was going to say... Um, Kingston. Yeah. Right. I don't know. So, um, but, it's better as a hill. I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. Yeah. No, so I, I remember like saying back in the past that I, I want Kofi to turn hill because it mm-hmm. would, it would, I thought it would change him. But it seems so like against every fiber of what he is because he seems like a natural baby face, but he sort of sucks as a baby face. <laughs> Even, I mean, I don't know how that doesn't make any, I know it doesn't make any sense what I'm saying, but he feels like a natural baby face. Like Orton feels like a natural hill, mm-hmm. but he just wasn't any good at it. I didn't think he would be like very good at the um, the hill work, but he is. I don't know. He's pretty decent at it. Yeah, he's taking it and running with it. So really good stuff. But Los Matadores end up getting the victory. After that, we got a very brief match between Big Show and Miz. Typical squash. Um, I don't think Big Show's ever won with an elbow, which was pretty interesting. But Big Show gets the win on that. Afterwards, we get to see Paul Heyman come out and uh, deliver a promo. His response. To the Undertaker, and uh, but before all of that happened, Triple H and Stephanie were shown backstage giving the lessons to the locker room, saying it's your job to keep Undertaker and Brock Lesnar apart. Your livelihood depends on it. Don't you know? Don't screw this up, basically. And or sure enough, fired. yeah. Well, without actually saying it, yeah. But you know, five minutes later, sure enough, there's a brawl ensues that. The entire rock locker room failed to break apart or prevent happening. I love Taman's line about uh, hey, your soul may belong to the devil, but your ass belongs to Brock Lesnar. <laughs> yes, that was that's really also good. what in the fuck? Why was why was Lesnar so scared whenever like Taker showed up at the end of Battleground, but he's fucking pissed running down to ready to wolf some ass on Raw? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Because he was going after Paul. He saw a ghost. Undertaker was going after Paul. No one touches Paul. He says stuff that's stupid. I don't know. It just so seems, seems weird to me. Paul. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, typical great work from Heyman. Good lines. I like it. Uh, the Undertaker and Brock Lesnar brawl. I liked it. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> like, as, much, as stupid as this is booking-wise, it's a pretty fucking cool spectacle to see these dudes, like, you know, Jumping mm-hmm. at each other, getting separated by the roster. tearing each other apart, sure, and wanting cool. to get each other. It, was, they, they, it, it did go into overkill to me because I thought once they came back from commercial and they were still doing it, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, that's a little, that's a little much. I thought it was a nice touch because they don't normally show mm-hmm. something like that because you know normally okay they go back to the back and and that's the end of it. Right. But this time they come back and no, these guys are still going at it. They've been fighting throughout the entire commercial break. They, right. These guys are still trying to tear each other apart and. Brock Lesnar pushes over a table for no reason. It wasn't even in his path. He went out of his way to flip that table to get at The Undertaker. And- Does that surprise you? How many things has Brock Lesnar thrown into the crowd and hit someone <laughs> inadvertently? Like three times now? Do you yeah. really, are you surprised? Well, this, one, well, this was backstage. I yeah, know, but are you surprised that he would have such <laughs> reckless abandon for an inanimate object? It was just the fact that he went out of his oh, way. Right. Like He didn't go the straight and narrow path. He went off to the side. To flip it and then correct it went back on the correct path. Look, I, I, get where, I, I get where you're coming from, but this is a man that hit someone in the head with a car door that he ripped off. <laughs> well, when you say it like that, when you say it like that, it sounds bad. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, I loved it. It was I thought it was a great touch. Uh, <laughs> listening to r Truth trying, trying to calm down Brock Lesnar, I thought was hilarious. What happened? I didn't, I didn't hear. Part. I didn't hear. Uh, oh, truth. dude! See, was, the ACs messed up in my apartment. So I had these big fans uh, going, so I couldn't sucks. hear the. the it was basically you know it was the part where Lesnar was backed up against the wall and like everyone was surrounding him and he's like, okay, okay, I'm calm. He's, and you could just hear truth in the background or next to him. He's like, dude, you got to calm down. It's going to be okay. You know, calm, calm yourself down. So uh, I, I was just cracking up at that because it's like the one, the person who's talking, trying to talk sense into Brock Lesnar is our truth. So uh, it was just a nice touch. And, you know, the put the zip ties on him, zip tie handcuffs, which I don't know. I think he might have been able to break it if he actually tried. Um I was he didn't even get her on his fucking forearm. Yeah, they somehow managed to. Um, but one of the things that I loved was the the part where Lesnar's just like, "Don't touch me! Don't!" T-. I mean, you can put the cuffs on, but do not touch me. And so he's starting to walk, and the guy puts his arm on, you know, puts his hand on Lesnar's shoulder, and he's like, he, "You know, you can tell he's like, seriously, do not touch me." Yeah. I was like, "I'm walking. I'm walking next to you. You're not touching me." Right. And then he continued to walk off. So, you know, it was really cool stuff. I, I enjoyed watching that. Um, those brawls are, they tend to be pretty fun to see. Yeah, I mean, they pulled it together for Raw. I still think it's a big mistake booking-wise. I think it short-sighted. Yeah. Um, I, I'm still not confident they're going to have a good match. It's the nostalgia factor. and It's not even nostalgia. It's just, fu- it's just fucking cool to see two guys, like, wanting to get in yeah. each other's asses, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. So uh, after that, we got to see Roman Reigns going up against Luke Harper. Roman wanting some revenge, and uh, he had Dean Ambrose by his side, whereas Harper had Wyatt by his. See, this is where the Sting stuff doesn't make sense to me because I feel like they're booking towards a tag match between these guys. Mm-hmm. Some I'm, I'm going to agree with you. Uh, I know there's a lot of talk that Sting is going to be facing Bray Wyatt, but at this point, I think I think it's real. I think they would have already pulled the trigger. Right. I think it's real. Um, not a coincidence that Harper just came back and then Ambrose is like second in uh, Reigns like the next night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't see them doing anything but a tag match. Yeah. I kinda, I'm kind of cool with that because I think if they could have a good match. Yeah, I think they could. Um, I kind of feel bad for Ambrose though because he's being sucked back into this tag division. They don't really have anything for him. He was, at one time he was real over on his own too. Yeah, I mean, he's still over. He Like whenever his music hit, crowd went absolutely nuts he's a definite he's a definite fan favorite yeah. the crowd loves him but for some reason or another they're just not elevating him as as a lot of people think that they should be um, yeah let's it's like they're using him to get the crowd to get back on roman reigns side think about it this way at Battleground, you had Taker coming back, getting mm-hmm. involved for your main event of SummerSlam. You had Cena beating Owens when he shouldn't have. Yep. And if you take those booking decisions into account, and then you also take into account that Dean Ambrose wasn't on that card, mm-hmm. Rusev wasn't on that card, mm-hmm. Zara wasn't on that card, mm-hmm. all these dudes who could theoretically be your future if you play your cards right, who are good now that you yeah. could do something with, just weren't even on the card. Yeah. And I don't... In all honesty, because I, I posted that picture of uh, of the main event with Cesaro standing next to Randy Orton and, and John Cena, and someone made the comment saying that Cesaro is about 36 at this point in time. So it's like, how many years can he really provide? So it's like, they need to be establishing him to kind of take over for a little bit. And I don't know. I mean, that's a good point, but... Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking something up to make a point with it. I'm doing it really bad. Uh, really bad. Okay, that's a really good point, but the Undertaker is fucking 50. Yeah. And he, you're counting on him to draw right fucking now. Uh, Cesaro's got a little bit more legs on him than fucking the Undertaker does. And I understand yeah. that Undertaker comes with all this gravitas and history, mm-hmm. fucking nostalgia, but that man can fucking, ha- God forbid, could have a heart attack tomorrow and then, you know. That'd be that, it. Yeah, what, what is he going to do for you then, you know? Yeah. That's a morbid way of putting it. I'm just saying, realistically, fucking Cesaro's got more legs than Taker. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what their, what their 36, thought process 36 is. 36 ain't that old, though, man. Yeah, it's really not that bad. So, but you don't want to waste <clears throat> more time, sure. you know, 
trying to establish a guy who's ready ready for that spot. It's not that old, but the fuse is burning. Yeah. You know, so you've got Ambrose who who could be in that top tier. You've got Cesaro who could be in that top tier. You've got Rusev who surprisingly, you know, has, has could have been in that top tier. Maybe even Wyatt is just I don't know. Like, you know, everyone thinks back to to the Attitude Era and how great the characters were and that's true and they had one title just like they do now but look at all the you know the stars that they had they had austin the rock undertaker kurt angle mick foley uh you know just to name a few and so now you've got john cena randy orton uh well the thing is is they've got guys on this roster that are as talented as any other era mm -hmm. they're not stars because they're not fucking booked like stars they're yep. not given a chance to be stars mm -hmm. i mean kevin owens a prime example that is a guy who was set to become a star if you booked him like a star yep. and you were not interested in booking him like a star or else you would have fucking made him a star in battleground yep and cemented him as your number two heel mm -hmm. now he's just another dude on the roster doing pull aparts with the rest of the fucking yep. middle as soon as i saw him out there doing that pull apart i'm like he should not be out there if cena doesn't have to be involved in that pull apart owen should not have have had well, to have been involved in they that booked him into that position now he's just yep. like all those other dudes he's just, yep he's just someone who's looking at triple h whenever he says make sure this pull apart, you know make sure that these two guys don't go at it yeah i mean he debuted defiantly like talking shit to Cena and beating Cena. Mm -hmm. But now he's just a dude who's just going to be like taking orders, no questions asked. Like, yep. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah. It is. It's really sad. Ugh. But, um, you know, Roman Reigns going up against Luke Harper. Roman gets the victory via disqualification. Anything to really take away from the matchup? No. All right. Well, after Although, the it was a I want to say it was a really good match. Um, Reigns' selling was off the fucking charts. In this yeah. Match. Really With good. With his selling. arm, too. Yeah. It was good. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what I mean by the yeah. <laughs> But um, after that, we got to see Seth Rollins come out and talk his trash and everything. And John Cena comes out to try and shut him up. And I was fucking befuddled. I didn't know what they were going to do with Cena. I didn't know what they were going to do with Rollins. But I damn sure didn't think they were going to put them together. Yeah, and I hope that they do not go this route. Um, but I'll take it over Kane, but yeah. I mean. We, what can you do? Uh, we don't I, need the, the title. The thing is, like I think they'll have a good matches, but it just feels like going back to the wealthy soon. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, well, Rollins isn't getting it done, so maybe we need to have him go up against Cena or I don't know. Ugh. It's just weird. Like, it's I, another match that I don't think is going to end clean. Uh, well, I think it's like readily apparent that they are not going to give you a finish to a main event anymore. They just they don't yeah. have to. They don't have to. They didn't sell you a fifty dollar pay per view. They sold you the network, and you just continue following the story on the network. Yep. <coughs> just all kinds of craziness. I don't know. I don't get it. But uh, after that, we got to see a second Divas match, and I'm actually kind of glad that they did because I felt like this match was was uh, better than than the previous one. It was uh, Sasha Banks teaming up with Naomi to go up against Becky Lynch and Paige, with Sasha Banks and Naomi getting the victory. So, uh, what were your thoughts on this matchup? It was it was it was pretty solid. Um, it's still not this revolution that they spoke of. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with that is, is these three women still have to wrestle the other women, and yeah. um, what made these three women is like twenty minute main events on NXT, and mm -hmm. are are they going to be allowed that? It seems as though they've gotten more time and more opportunity in yeah. the past couple of weeks. They still have to wrestle the girls who are not used to that and probably can't deliver on that. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It, Do you think that they're bringing in the NXT Divas to try and elevate the the regular Divas and I'm, say, hey, you need to start getting on our level? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the vision is because they can't. I mean, they could just wrestle each other like they did in NXT, but mm -hmm. I don't think that's what they're going to do. Yeah, they're going to try and elevate their current talent to match that par and say, oh, our girls can hang with the NXT girls. Sure. And uh, as far as we've seen, I mean, do you you think these women are going to be dipping back into NXT? You think they're going to be pulling double duty? I'm for sure for a while, yeah. 
because <laughs> NXT suddenly gets a lot lighter whenever uh, Sasha and Becky are gone. Yeah, you, you're looking now. You're looking at like Balor. Owens is on his way out. Mm-hmm. Joe Hideo. Joe. Hideo's out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's you know. looking a little thin over there, guys. Yeah. And so they, they, I don't know. NXT looks a little light without Becky and Sasha. Mm-hmm. To be honest. I don't know. We'll have to see where where that all plays out. But Sasha Banks and Naomi get the win. Uh, not too bad. After that, we got to see a... Uh, it's fucking cool to be able to say that a promotion looks a little light without two women there. That's yeah. a pretty fucking cool thing to be able to say. I mean, I guess it's not technically a promotion. It's more of a brand, but still, yeah. you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we get what you're going. But uh, after that, we got a, uh, a backstage segment with Lana giving us an update on uh, Dolph Ziggler saying that he'll recover. He'll be back. Don't worry about it. And then Summer Rae shows up dressing all... Like Lana. Yeah, all like Lana. Lana the thing yeah. that... I, <laughs> The thing that got me was that the camera panned over and she's just standing there. Like, I've been here this entire time and you're just now noticing me kind of thing. Yeah. Like, like have her walk up. Don't just be like, oh, I hit my, I, you know, I've been standing on on this spot while you did your little thing and now it's my turn to I've been talk. standing on this little taped X on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hit my mark, but. um My turn. Yeah, so she walks up and Rusev comes up and is like, Summer, you look fantastic. And I gotta tell you, <laughs> you I gotta beautiful. tell you, as cheesy as this shit is, Rusev's pretty good in this role. Yeah, it was, I mean, God. He's got, he's got more range than I sus- ever suspected of him. Yeah. He can do the cheese shit, too. You look phenomenal. You look amazing. Say something in Bulgarian to you. He, just looks, he, <laughs> looked, he, like, really he looked like such a fucking goof, but like, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't Did know. he really say that? Say something in Bulgarian. Well, he said something in a different language. I'm only assuming it's Bulgarian. He's just, he just trying to make Lana jealous. Yeah. The thing about it is, why if Lana was like, if Lana's done with him, then why is she? Why, why does she, she even jealous? care? Yeah. Why, why don't she just walk away? Go sit with Ziggler at home. I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, okay, that's the wrong attitude to have. Obviously, she's her own woman. She can be at work without want, yeah. without Ziggler. But like, why is she jealous if they're done or whatever? Yeah. Uh and so we get to see the very first kiss between Rusev and Summer Rae. That's as bad as Lana and Ziggler. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Rusev did the whole eye open thing. I'm looking at you, Lana. Make right. sure you're taking this in kind of right. thing. And uh, then he walks over to Lana and is like, oh, you're not looking so good. You need, <laughs> you need, to, you need to get some rest or something. You're looking rough. And uh, I don't know. Maybe it was me, but Summer Rae cannot pull off that outfit. I think she looked fine. I don't, yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I, I didn't like it. Yeah. Bird law was too much in effect. Her legs aren't as shapely, I guess, as Lana's. I don't know. I don't know how to word it, but I'll take Lana over Summer Rae any day. I don't know, man. I'm in no, in no position to be judging anybody's looks. So. <laughs> well, that's Come just on. my preference. Uh, hey, I mean, yeah, uh, man. Of, of the two, if I was forced to choose. You're entitled to your preference okay. i'm just not gonna talk shit anyways looks okay because i'm in new i'm not saying she looked bad i don't know i don't know i'm saying lana looked better all right. okay all right it's just, all making, good. just making sure we're, we're well, clear on it's everything fine. it's fine but then uh summer decided to slap lana <gasps> and uh did she say anything to her or did she kind of just walk off she just kind of like yeah ha <laughs> <laughs> ha that'll, that'll teach you yeah so that takes us into the main event <laughs> <laughs> That reminds me, uh, before Rusev left, whenever he was, after he got done with the kiss, he was like, oh, I must go prepare for my match now. <laughs> like, what the hell? I'm telling you, as cheesy as it was, and as lame as the single is, Rusev is really funny in it. I don't know. Yeah. He's, was, he looks like just such a little goof. It was know. so bad it was good kind of thing. But, um, yeah, so that takes it into the main event. Cena teaming up with Cesaro and Orton to go up against Kevin Owens, Rusev, and Sheamus. In a three-on-three tag match, play a match, holla holla match. Um, it was a fun. It was a fun main event. I felt like this would have been like the main event to a house show, which you know they've done on several occasions. Nothing wrong with with doing it. Um, the storyline wasn't can Cena and Orton and Cesaro gel. It was the destruction of Sheamus and Owens and Rusev, the implosion, if you will. Um, them not being able to get along, which right. I absolutely love that storytelling because it's three heels. They don't necessarily have to get along with one another. And this was one of the instances where they did not. Right. Um, 
So I, I really enjoyed that little detail of of telling that particular story. Seamus was the first to be like, screw this, I'm out of here. Give me my briefcase. Owens hit me, I'm out, I'm gone. And then Owens quickly followed, and that led to the ending of the match with Rusev being pinned. So what did what were your thoughts on it? Well, Owens kicked Rusev too, so. Yeah, that's true. It was sort of like. Quadruple attack. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was fine. I mean, mm. like like you said, I think it was pretty akin to a hell show main event. Probably. Excuse me, it was, it was fine for what it was. Yeah. So uh, it, it was fantastic a, work, but nothing to complain about. Yeah, it was an attitude adjustment into the Cesaro swing, into a monkey flip that landed an RKO. So that that was actually pretty cool. That got a lot of people talking. It was more of a slingshot, I think. Or yeah, excuse me, slingshot. Um, and so I mean, the crowd was hot for that, definitely. So that pretty much closed out Raw. Nothing really to send off after that. But yeah, yeah, it was fine. It was a fun little. It was a fun little bit of Raw. A lot of people were saying it was probably the best Raw. In, in some time uh, over the past few weeks or months. So I think the uh, the matches were a little lackluster, but overall, you know, you had the pull apart, the face-to-face Undertaker-Lesnar thing, and then this main event was pretty fun as well. So I spent a lot of time on that pull apart. Yeah, they really did. I mean, that's fine. I'm just, and it was like a really, it went really long. Mm-hmm. So, and, in, and if you include the... Uh, Paul Heyman promo mixed with the Triple H and Stephanie McMahon promo. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Uh, that I'm really talking did. talking to the locker room. Yeah. That was so... The camera angle on that was just so cheesy to me. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So, that pretty much closed it out. And uh, we do have a little bit to talk about. No Q&A this week, but we are going to talk about Lucha Underground. Lucha, Lucha. So, uh, so Doug, the uh, the first matchup was uh, Davari going up against Bengala um, for an Aztec medallion. Yep, yep. So, what do you think about the uh, the opening contest? Uh, I remember thinking it was fun. I mean, this has been like a week now. I yeah. watched it Wednesday night, so Same I'm a little me. sketchy. But I, I remember liking this. I thought it was a fun opener. Uh, Bengala is, um, I think, Ricky Marvin's new gimmick. I think he's been doing it in Japan. I think for Noah. He's, I think he's doing it for Noah. But uh, he's obviously doing it for Lucha Underground now. And he got one of the medallions. But I remember mm-hmm. liking it. I don't know if I remember specifics of the match, really. Did yeah. they ever say what the uh, medallions are for? I think it's all, all playing into Ultimate Lucha or whatever. Mm. That would be interesting. Yeah, they haven't really said, but... I think uh, they represent all the tri- Aztec tribes or something. Yeah. And, you yeah, know, they're, they're playing it up like it's supposed to give you ancient powers or something like that. Something to that degree, but we'll have to see. But after that, we got to hear from Vampiro talking to Pentagon Jr., Saying, you know, my time has passed and, you know, I'm, I don't want to fight you. I don't want to fight you at Ultimate Lucha. Um, but guess what? I'm going to fight you at Ultimate Lucha. I'm going to kick your ass. Vampiro's going to whoop that ass. Well, what whoop they, that, what, what he ass. was, what was happening is Pentagon Jr. was addressing him as his real name. And he said, <laughs> uh, he's not going to fight you. Vampiro isn't going to fight you. So yeah. It was more of, <laughs> it, it wasn't like, uh, I'm not going to fight you. It was like, oh, you're not dealing with me. You're dealing with Vampiro. Mm-hmm. Like, bitch, I'll fight you anywhere. I'll fight you on the moon. What's his name? Like <laughs> Ian Hutchinson or something? Yeah. <laughs> Hodgkinson, I think. Yeah. Something like that. Sorry, Vamp. I'm fucking yeah. up your name, dog. That's all right. Uh, after that, we got to see another match for the Aztec Medallions featuring King Cuerno going up against Killshot. Anything to really uh, take away from this matchup? I, I can't remember. No, it's pretty good. It. I'm still sort of shocked by how much I enjoy Killshot because um, I... Him unmasked never did any much much for me, mm. so I don't know. I, mean, I guess I only saw like a little bit of his. They unmasked C- him. CZ Killshot? Du- no, um, no. Uh, I've only saw like a little bit of the CZW work, and like I think he did like a, an Evolve weekend or something. But, uh-huh. So I don't know. Maybe I just never saw enough. But I'm surprised. He seems a lot better than last time when I saw him originally. So. Hmm. Very cool. Uh, after that, we got to see Sexy Star going up against Superfly. Here's the thing. Um, I, I'm i cool with her beating Superfly, uh, but they made it this, like, uh, grandiose thing. Like, they, they gave her the big video package of her... Holding the mask. Uh, unmasking Superfly, and, like, this is sort of like... Um, he came back and beat her, and th- this was sort of like the... Um, wait, did he beat her? Was this a rubber match? Did he beat her, and then this is, like, their third or something? Or did he just come back and attack her? 
They just came back and attacked. Him. Okay, yeah. either either way, they made it like this big grand thing that it happened, and she beat him in like two minutes. Mm -hmm. Like they made it like this is a big deal, and then she beat him like two minutes <laughs> off of like a La Maestro Cradle or something like that. I don't know. And uh, she wrestled. Uh, who did she wrestle immediately after? Oh, someone came out and challenged her. Oh, Mar uh, the Moth dude. Uh, oh, Marty the Moth. Marty the Moth was like, "Yo, that's." Is that a moth on that uh, medallion? Yeah. Because that's my family's heritage. <laughs> and then she wrestled him. So I understand that um, no, she did. He was like, yeah. let me. He's like, can I see that? He's like, that's a fucking moth. Do you not get like. I uh, have Aztec blood. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I get that. I get that going short. If she was going to wrestle two dudes, she beat them both. She wrestled them both. I get it. But they put, they seemed like they intended so much emphasis on the Superfly stuff, you know, mm -hmm. but she just whooped. She just she ran through them. She ran through both of them. And I don't have a problem with her running through them, but, like, why put all the emphasis on the Superfly <laughs> thing for her, her to destroy them in two minutes? It's a little weird, right? Yeah. Very strange. Okay. I just thought, uh, making sure I wasn't the only one. Good stuff. Uh, and the final bit, we got to see uh, Prince Puma and Mio Muertes face off. And uh, I like that Dario Cuerdo was in the ring. He wanted to, you know, moderate it, make sure everything went well. He told Conan, stay in the back. He told, uh, who was it? Katrina. Katrina. Katrina, stay in the back. You know, this is just a face-off. We don't want any any fighting or anything like right. that. We just want them to face off against one another. And sure enough, here comes Katrina. And then the, uh, who was it? The, the crew? No, it wasn't Georgia. the crew. Oh, her Skull Guys? Yeah. Um, fuck, what were they called? Skull Guys. They're not Skull Guys. Skull! Skull! I'm sorry, I forget what they're called. That's okay. But they showed up, uh, put the beat down on, uh, on Prince Puma, Conan came out to try and defend him and um, got beat down as well. And they threw Conan into the casket and rolled him out to, oh, to no. close out the show. So not looking good. Well, we for have Prince two Puma. weeks or one week left. Or are they going hiatus? Oh man, I don't know. I want to say two, maybe three. It's in August, right? Ultimate Lucha. I think it's like the first week of August, maybe. Mm. So that would be two weeks. I think yeah. we got two two episodes left before they break. Right. This week, next week, and then... Uh, I think Ultimate Lucha is the first week of August, isn't it? Oh, well, in that case, we have this week, and then next week. At the most, we have three weeks. And I, I want to say we yeah. have two. All right, so that's... They go on hiatus. Yeah, so that's pretty much how they uh, they close it out. So really good stuff. Um, so if you're not checking out Ultim uh, Lucha Underground, definitely make sure you catch the final couple of weeks so you can get caught up on what's going to be happening at Ultima Lucha. So really cool stuff. There you go. That's going to wrap up the show this week. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and sub uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, WNS Video. You can also submit questions there. Also, our Facebook page, WNS Podcast. Check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com, WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook. And you can also subscribe to our show on iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast. We're also on Stitcher, Beyond Pod, and Player.fm. Just search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Um, you can follow the podcast on Twitter. It's at WNS Podcast. You can follow Radio Star Danny Ray at WNS underscore Daniel. You can follow <laughs> Vine Star Tyler Aber. Tyler underscore yeah, Aber. Future Vine Star. <laughs> there you go for the podcast crew. I am Fake Daniel. Fake it till you make it, Tyler. Fake huh? it till you make it. Fake it till I make it. Hell yeah. Check out my two vines that I got. <laughs> Like that shit. <laughs> like that shit. Share that shit. Follow me. I'm Tyler A. Bear. Bye. <laughs> I'm Doug. And we will catch you all next week.